Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, August 9th, 2023, and I'm going to start with this new introduction. You are watching the news underground, the underground, because I am so buried in every algorithm, you can't even find me on the internet no more. Woohoo! Let's get into it. First, uh, first thing I want to just start off with, because I want to start off with the best first on this video. A lot of times I want to save the best for last. But I'm just going to start off with the best first because this woman reminds me of my uh, my black mother. And I call her my, well, I guess my stepmother. She was my stepmother. And uh, she took no bones, man. She beat me. <laughs> she, she didn't put up with no crap from my juvenile delinquent days. Let's watch that video right now. You know what? I, I'll let this video speak for itself because... Uh, doesn't she kind of look like your grandmother in a certain kind of way? Uh, I think she looks kind of like we called her other mom. That was my grandmother. But just listen to what she has to say. I, I thought this was a beautiful speech uh, just from a Russian citizen. Уважаемый, мы тебя назвать не хотим. Мы знаем, что ты замышляешь сейчас в последнее время применить на территории Украины тактическое ядерное оружие. И опять же готовишь эту всю тему, чтобы сослаться, что сослать это все отнести, что это сделала Россия. Так вот мы тебя предупреждаем, что сколько ты уже сделал таких терактов, ты сбил самолет, в Запорожскую атомную станцию взорвали, и опять Россия виновата, и опять Россия виновата. Вы взорвали поток, газовый поток номер один и номер два, и опять вы на Россию это все отнесли. Ну до каких пор ты будешь брехать по нашему сказано? Ты понимаешь? Опомнись ты! Ну смотри, мы тебя предупреждаем, за тактическое ядерное оружие пусть слышит весь мир. Мы уже знаем об этом, что ты там это... замучиваешь что-то, замучиваешь что-то такое. Смотри, это у тебя не получится. Wasn't that impressive? <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I wouldn't want to beat that woman in a dark alley, I can tell you that. Especially in my condition, being a crippled old fart like I am. So let's just get into the news for just a minute, and then we'll put up another video here soon. I, I was watching Redacted, and I, it seems that we have aliens in Peru. Aliens in Peru, you'll have to watch the Redacted uh, uh, show today. Um, they went into all the details about that, but I guess there's a tribe down there, and uh, this alien uh, group or aliens kidnapped this 16-year-old girl, and when they got her back, she had lacerations around her throat, uh, and so they went out and they found the aliens, evidently, and they shot, shot them with the guns. I mean, so that kind of indicates to me that it wasn't just because uh, the, the Peru Peruvian government said it was the miners. And the miners come in and they try to scare the locals away so they can come in and illegally mine uh, territory that uh, and, and do it in a, a non-environmental way. Uh, you'd think that uh, that, that these uh, leftist lunatics that, uh, that are worried about environmental crisis would go down there and, and try to put a stop to that. But anyway, and but it couldn't have been them because they said they shot them and they hit them. And the bullets just bounced off. So they must have had some sort of, uh, you know, new age body armor of some sort. So who knows? You have to watch Redacted to get the whole story on that. Because they, they're saying it could be government types that have, have advanced on uh, UFO technology. Very fascinating story. I, I've been following along. And I, I love watching Redacted because they do get into stories like that. Uh, of course, you know that we've got Diane Feinstein. Uh, she's down somewhere. And... I, you know, I put out a comment. I said, you know, why, who are the voters? Maybe leave a comment below. Who are these people that want these geriatric, dysfunctional people uh, to rule them in the United States government? I mean, why is she, why does she keep getting voted in? And when, when I say that, I am trying to be mean because she is one of the architects of all of the spying that's taking place here in the United States. She's a main funder of the NSA. She is against the American people in every way, shape, and fashion. So she's a dysfunctional geriatric that somebody keeps voting for. Somebody explain that one to me. 
I had another comment. I thought this was cute because uh, they were talking about the uh, the sanctions uh, and uh, on Russia. And I said, yeah, yeah, the uh, NATO sanctions on Russia are now uh, sanctions on NATO. <laughs> They've completely backfired. Russia being the number five GDP in the world now. Holy moly. Uh, there was also on redacted uh, video that the Crimea Bridge, uh, they've, they've uh, conducted partial repairs, and so now traffic is moving back and forth across that bridge. Uh, it does have to slow down, and it's going to take until December for uh, the Russians to repair that bridge. Uh, there was another one. Boy, I tell you, you never know when a comment's going to go viral <laughs> on, on, on X. I can't call it Twitter no more. But when it goes viral, it, it's always the ones that I just, you know, I just throw out there and I don't even really think about it. And I probably should because it's going to come back to haunt me someday. I'm sure it will. Uh, you know, I'm, I might, well, I'm sure FBI agents are going to be busting down my door. If, if I ever get more than 16 viewers, I don't think that'll ever happen. But anyway, uh, there was this, it, they showed a picture in this woman. I mean, she's in charge of Ukraine and she had some sort of comment. Maybe I'll, I well, I ain't going to have time in this video to bring it up. And I said, man, this 1,000 pound woman <laughs> is in charge of, you, of Ukraine troops. She's evidently an officer of some type. I said, what are, where are their physical military standards? I said, no wonder they're all dying on the battlefield. I mean, they have no physical standards for their military. Oh my God. I mean, I, there's no way she, well, I guess in today's U.S. military, but, you know, not back in the 80s when I was in, or 90s or 2000s. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, and I put out another comment. This one got a lot of uh, uh, interesting feedback. I said, uh, Macron's uh, globalist rule in France is, is coming to an end sooner than, uh, than we thought. I think his, his term's up in 2027. I, I don't see how he makes it until then. I mean, the French people hate him. Uh, and now he's lost Niger. We're going to get into Niger, by the way. Hold on, hold on to that. But let's get to another uh, another video. I thought this was a really uh, a really uh, cool video. This is that uh, this is old news, and it's, but it's just forty one seconds. This is that drone attack on the ship. Uh, check it out. So uh, this is old news, but I, this is a, the pictures coming off of the drone. I guess it was beaming it back to the British troops that were navigating this. Uh, drone towards the Russian uh, tanker, and uh, isn't this crazy? I mean, we can kind of watch war real time from the devices that are used. Uh, it's moving, maneuvering in to hit the, uh, this, this is a small oil tanker. You, I don't know if you've been following the news or not. It comes in, and, uh, and this ship ended up listing. It's not completely destroyed. It's just sitting out there. It's going to be a long time. Wasn't that cool? drone coming in i mean how in the well i guess that you know it must have radar antennas that just or radar antennas that beam the signal back so they can record the video as the drone comes because obviously the drone was destroyed when it hit the ship so let's get uh, let's keep going uh so that's the second video uh another um yeah oh yeah and, and then of course macron said he wanted to attend the BRICS conference coming up on august 22nd they told him nope <laughs> You're not allowed in South Africa. I thought that was hilarious. Oh my God, the French people are—they they better be prepared. I think things are going to be hurting. Well, in all of Europe, in all of and somebody pointed that out because I was talking about just France, and they said no, all of Europe's hurting. And then there was a there was one I put out a comment. I said, well, who who watches women's soccer? Because <laughs> you know I mean? there's been a lot of people talking about the fact that the women's uh, soccer team lost, and they were all happy about it. I don't want to see anybody lose, but, you know, women with blue hair that uh, spit on the American flag and then won't even put their hands over their heart. I hate to say it, man. I guess I'm kind of vindictive. I'm glad they lost. And, and, and then once again, where are the standards? I mean, why as a coach are you allowing uh, magenta, blue haired and purple haired women on your team? Uh, and not and telling you know telling them they're supposed to be representing the United States empire and, and yet stand there and, and you know, uh, spit on us. They spit on the American people. And uh, and so my comment was, you know, basically along those lines. And I said, why don't we just send them to China, man? I mean, that's where they need to go. They don't care about the United States. And and I kind of wanted to do a quick comparison on that was, uh, you know, think back on the movie uh, Major League, not the, not the men's movie, but the women's movie. And uh, how much they wanted that image of women, and it was it was kind of it was sexist. I mean, you know, they wanted them in the skirts, and they wanted them, but you, 
but they were supposed to be, you know, symbols of, of pride for the United States, no matter how deranged it was. <laughs> so but they, they did enforce those standards. And, and so for them to play, they had to sign up and say, OK, you know, I'll, I'll at least pretend that I care about the United States. Uh, and so now the, the coaches, they say, well, you know, you don't even need to you don't even need to pretend to care about the United States. I don't know. Uh, there was another comment that I made on um, on uh, X, and uh, you know it was it was about uh, the new uh, well the, the debate that's coming up with the uh, Republicans, and I and I said well no I, I I think Trump would be a fool to attend that debate he's so far ahead in the polls I said I want to see him and Tucker during the debate sit down for an interview that's that's my dream all right so let's uh, let's see man I I guess I better keep going through the news before we get to the next video. Uh, yeah, dark times ahead for Europe. Oh, yeah, so here we're, we're starting to get, I'm starting to get more information about Niger. I, man, I'll tell you, I'm just like you. I didn't even know Niger existed before this whole thing took place. Or some of these other African nations, I, I didn't know their names. Kind of looking at uh, oil getting cut off from Europe. Uranium uh, is now cut. Well, and by the way, I got the numbers on that. It's on this side. Let me get to that real quick. Well, since I'm just talking about that. Uh, one third of France depends on nuclear power. Okay, so that's one third of their, their electrical generation is nuclear power. And one fifth of their uh, uranium comes from Niger. So, and by the way, Niger has cut off that uranium. Uh, they, they, they've halted it. And I did not know, I mean, the US base there is pretty damn big, man. And so is the, the French base. So I wonder if the uh, U.S. and French are going to come out and uh, and and take on um, the Niger uh, military forces and overthrow the new government. So we'll see. But I mean, I'm going to tell you, it's it's the new government's very popular. It says that 78 percent of the population supports the new government in Niger, and this was an interesting statistic: 60 percent want Russia as an ally. Uh, and then, of course, they're reaching out to Wagner, and we've got Wagner representatives in Nigeria right now. I've been reporting on this, well, since the whole damn thing took place, but I didn't have these numbers before, so I'm starting to get more information. Um, and then the other thing that's really insane is like 90% of the people in Nigeria live in, in abject poverty. I mean, it's not even like we see, I mean, we see poverty, tremendous poverty here in the United States. This is even worse. I mean, imagine 90% of the population. So don't tell me that the colonial West hasn't been exploiting them because they've got gold, they've got uranium, they're rich in natural resources. All the, all the West had to do was share the wealth, and they didn't do it. And so now we're seeing the repercussions of all of that. So I'm kind of rooting for Niger, uh, and I hope the Russians do come in and help them. You know, we'll see. Uh, maybe, you know, and Wagner... Wagner's never exploited resources. All they've done is just provide military support or, or military advisement or military training to uh, these African nations. And they're all turning to Russia right now. So we've got a whole new proxy war brewing for sure, for sure. Let's keep going. Oh, yeah, you've got to be checking this one out. I'm not sure what I can say on YouTube. Uh, and I, I can't, I, I just don't have the time to make a separate video for Rumble. But I do encourage you to get out there and look on uh, X because they're talking about they found all of the, uh, this, uh, these ballots that were in Detroit, uh, which indicates uh, there was a tremendous voter scandal that took place there. And I, I don't want to say no more than that. Uh, you can go out and do your own homework and do your own research on that. But it's getting very, very uh, interesting. And what they're saying is, uh, well, they, they tried to turn it over to the FBI. Of course, the FBI is not going to touch it. How stupid can these people be? <laughs> So what they're saying now uh, is that they're going to go to the local um, uh, district attorneys and all and, and see if they can get some traction on uh, looking into this uh, trove of evidence that's been found in Detroit. And they're saying that they, they, they think that this exists in other places. They've just got to keep doing the um, doing their homework. So, oh, yeah, this was uh, this was interesting. Well, you know, let's get to another video. You know, let's let's just do one on me. Uh, I, I, I grow a garden, grow a garden, grow a garden. This is the latest on my garden. All right, so my videos are not just all about doom and gloom and war and death and geopolitics, but I kind of wanted to show you this. Uh, see, what I've gone is I've gone through here and I've pulled up all the weeds. Now, was that necessary? 
Yes and no. If you don't pull them up, then if you just kill them, then they'll just uh, deteriorate and all of that, uh, well, it eventually creates dirt in this rock. And so I want to pull up as much as I could and clean it out. And then what we're going to do, and I'm just going to give you the mix real quick because I don't need to show it to you. You want one gallon of vinegar. Now, I'm like Tim, the tool man, Taylor. <laughs> Because uh, a lot of people say you can use distilled vinegar. They say you can use cleaning vinegar. Those are just 5% solutions. No, man, go to Amazon and get the industrial strength, 45%. I guarantee you that's going to kill everything, man. It's going to kill everything. So anyway, I just wanted to show you um, the latest. Now, I, I, the HOA came after me. So I've been out. That's why that weed project came in. You know, I've had to get all these bushes. I tell you, it's hotter than hell here in Florida. And I can only work about two hours even with my crippled body. Um, so, you know, it's taken me about three or four days just to get all the weeds out of here and, and do all of this. But look at my poor garden. I wanted to show you because I was talking to somebody on Twitter and I said, you know, with failure comes great success. Now, these, these pepper plants were a great success, but I didn't have all the jars and everything I needed to... to, to um, to pickle all of these. Now I got I got four jars of pickled peppers in there. I had no idea I'd get so many. I mean, it's a good problem to have. And as you can see, I got to pull up all of these weeds, but look at what happened to my tomato plants. Oh my god, I tried. I did the best I could, but what I what we're going to do because it's August now. I'm in the second planting season here in Florida. And uh, I'm going to put up a trellis across here which is what i should have done in the first place but i'm like I said you know you gotta you gotta make some mistakes before you get things right and then you look right here that was a squash plant it didn't do too good i was hoping it would climb up this these uh this thing here now this is a blackberry bush you wouldn't know it it's kind of hidden back in there and i uh, so what i'm going to do is move these stakes over to to hold up that blackberry bush so it's what you do is you you, you you wrap the string around each side and that'll that'll uh, bring that bush right up and keep it off of the ground so that's kind of a next project and then of course the cucumber plant this died on me i didn't even get a single cucumber and then uh, of course i got to weed all this but the blueberry bushes are doing good and look at the pineapples they're coming in i got to pull up all these weeds but there's four pineapples right there i'm just really thrilled uh, they, they really took off i thought for sure they were going to die so let's uh let's step over the the tomato plant there because uh, and uh, by the way we're going to build a tr another trellis uh it's going to be a four foot trellis and so the next uh with the next growing season i'll try cucumbers again maybe not in this spot maybe further down but i have a feeling that with the trellis that i'll have a much better success with that now i wanted to show you this area here because what i'm going to do you see those peppers right there I, I got too tired yesterday and look at them, I, but they got seeds in them. And so what I'm going to do is, by the way, this is all black dirt. I dug this down about a foot. I put, uh, uh, what was it, uh, bone meal down in there. Uh, by the way, you don't want to use that, you know, when you're planting. You want to use it before you plant, let it, because you know a lot of times in that bone meal it could have some um, some bad things there. And then of course I put uh, uh, algae. I can't remember what it's called, and I mixed that into the soil. So this is all ready for planting. Uh, so I just got to, you know, I got to get some stuff in the ground, and so I'm going to try to put these peppers in the ground and see if see if something will come up. So, but man, you know, you can see we got a lot of work. And then of course I put boards in between this. Because, see, this is visible to the HOA. And these, these are okay to the HOA. If they knew I was growing food, holy moly, they, old people hate food, man. They hate it when you grow vegetables. They can't stand it. I'm going to tell you that right now. They can't stand it. They, you know, plants that just look pretty, they, they don't mind that. But, man, you, you want to grow a tomato plant, they hate that. Old people hate food. All right. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> I didn't know. You got to have a trellis. I mean, if you're going to have tomato plants, you got to have a trellis. I didn't. I, I mean, I'm learning as I go, you know, a cucumber plant died, zucchini, but look at the peppers. And so now, you know, I was talking to somebody and I've been, I've actually been throwing away peppers. I can't eat them all. And I've been pickling them, but I don't have enough jars. And somebody said, well, you can freeze them. And so I got to look into that. And then they also said, you know, why not uh, freeze dry them? And uh, I don't have a freeze dryer, but I'm thinking about buying one. Uh, maybe at the end of this month, uh, when I, when I get some cash in the, in the bank. And, uh, and, and and then I could freeze dry those peppers and just think you could make your own pepper uh, shaker and, and, and put that on food. I imagine when it's freeze dried, it'll probably keep for years, huh? 
So I've got to I've got to do something with the peppers. Like I said, I'm learning as I go. So I'm glad that uh, I got that video up. By the way, uh, you know, you know where we're dividing off. We got the, the the U.S. base, the French base, and then we got ECOWAS, Nigeria. They they did vote it down, but uh, they're still saying that they are. Uh, they're stomping the war drum for sure. This might be, but we're probably getting toward the end of the video. Thank I know you're saying, thank God, man. <laughs> oh, let's see. Well, and this, this was interesting. I didn't even know that these African nations, we talk about uh, French colonialism. They actually trade in French uh, money. So the French control their monetary policy for these African nations, and they're sick of it. That's why BRICS coming up is going to be huge. If these African nations could get away from French uh, money, and become, well, use maybe Russian uh, rubles or or maybe uh, yuan from China. I mean, this will be huge if they can get off of the France. Uh, the France, um, I don't even know. What, what do you call France's currency? I have no idea. Oh, yeah. And so and they did point out where all the uranium comes from in the world. And this, boy, I tell you what, man. Biden's got to be a foreign agent. He's got to be a foreign agent. If you If you're a Democrat... Why do you want this guy in charge? I don't even get it. But let's, let me get into the reason why I'm saying that. So Kyrgyzstan and Russia and Niger are the three prominent world providers of uranium. Okay, so we've already cut off uranium from Russia with the sanctions. Of course, I'm sure that everybody who needs it is buying it on the black market, but they're paying a lot more money for it. If they would have just been... Let's... let's Make peace, you fools. Make peace, you fools. You know, then, then they could get the uranium from Russia. Of course, they can't get it from Niger right now. And I guess Kyrgyzstan, I, I, for, as far as I know, the uranium's still coming from there. So then what does Biden do? He shuts down the uranium production mines in Arizona and declares it a national uh, park. Well, I, I don't know if you call it a national park, but a sanctuary of some sort. So... What is he trying to do? I mean, so now we can't get uranium in the United States. So what's going to happen to our nuclear power plants? Huh? You tell me. I mean, I don't know. I, it, it seems like people just don't pay attention to anything, man. So let's get to the, the last video, and then I'll finish up. Let's see. Oh, yeah, this, is, uh, this was an interesting. This was a battle uh, that took place in Ukraine. Um, the, 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 the armored column, it was a Russian column. They're coming down, and supposedly there are Ukrainians in the woods. Uh, and they're and they're firing into the woods. Let's just watch that video. So this is video of uh, a Russian armored unit. Um, supposedly there are some Ukrainians hiding out in those woods. So they're just driving by to conduct operations. Uh, now I don't know. You know, it's only a 44 second video, but uh, if there are Ukrainians in those woods, I wouldn't want to be there. Look at the firepower of these beasties. That's just insane. Oh, God, I'm glad I'm not fighting this war. I can tell you that right now. Look at that. Just just lighten up. Light it up. Wasn't that cool? I mean, I, boy, I tell you, well, thank God I'm not in that war. Holy moly. All right, so I guess that is about it. Peace out. Stay free. You can run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Run on for a long time. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Go tell that globalist liar, that Democrat idiot writer, that rhino rambler, that nuclear war gambler, that backbiting U.S. politician, sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down. Sooner or later, God's gonna cut you down.